Pompeii is part of the world's culture, but even though most people know about Mount Vesuvius, there's a lot we still don't know. For example, we don't even know what day this tragedy occurred. Most people know Pompeii as the city buried beneath the ash from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. But before the city was suddenly lost, it had had a long and interesting history. Pompeii had existed for hundreds of years, and it was an important city to both the Greeks and the Romans. It's a popular tourist attraction today. You can walk the excavated streets of the city freely and examine the plaster casts of the last people to live there. The discovery of Pompeii has dramatically affected our understanding of the Greeks and the Romans, and the eruption of Mount Vesuvius lives on in our societal memory. Here, we'll share 10 amazing facts about the city of Pompeii and the Mount Vesuvius eruption that preserved it for us to enjoy and ponder today. Number 1. Pompeii was a city long before the Romans became a world power. Pompeii is one of the rare cities that was not built by the Greeks or the Romans, but still was heavily influenced by both. Pompeii was first settled by the Oscan people in the 6th and 7th centuries BCE, but historians don't know much about them. We do know they were Indo-European and started Pompeii as a farming village. While Pompeii was growing, it had contact with the Greek colonies around them, and it very quickly began to adopt Greek culture and practices. Pompeii became a critical trading center for the Greeks. The city was influenced by several tribes and civilizations, including the Etruscans, for centuries before the Romans arrived and took over Pompeii in 89 BCE, turning the city into a retirement city for Legion veterans. It was only after the Romans fought off the Etruscans and the Samnites that they were able to turn Pompeii into a wealthy Roman city. Number 2. The Greeks Never Colonized Pompeii Although Pompeii was clearly influenced by Greek culture, and this is most clearly seen in the city's architecture, it never became a colony of Greece. The Greeks established colonies around Pompeii, including the city of Naples, but they were content to allow Pompeii to maintain its independence. It's possible that they thought the city was still too primitive to be worth colonizing, but they actively engaged in trade, so the city was exposed to Hellenistic culture all the same. They used Greek architecture in their houses and temples, and the most important temple was Pompeii's Temple of Apollo, which is one of the oldest buildings in Pompeii. Clearly, the city's people were assimilating to the Greek culture, and their increasing Hellenistic tendencies were preserved when the Romans took over. The Romans also appreciated Hellenistic culture, so they built their villas, or large aristocratic houses, with Greek architecture and filled them with Greek art. Much of this art was preserved when Mount Vesuvius erupted and is still being excavated today. Number 3. Under Roman Rule, Pompeii Developed a Middle Class For most of its history, Pompeii had been an important trading city. Merchants flocked to the city to make their wealth, and the Romans encouraged this. The entrepreneurs became so wealthy that they began competing with the nobility. Traditionally, big houses and jewelry were reserved for the upper class, partially because they were the only people who could afford them. But as the merchants began to accrue money, they began to build big houses that rivaled the villas of the nobility. They created a social class of their own, and the emergence of a middle class shows how the standard of living increased dramatically in Roman Pompeii. In fact, the standard of living increased so much that some of the wealthy even had running water in their villas. Although Pompeii still had a good deal of poverty, the development of a middle class proves how advanced the city already was. Number 4. The walls of Pompeii are covered in graffiti, and it's not from thoughtless tourists. One of the most amazing archaeological discoveries at Pompeii is the graffiti on the walls. Although some people may think that graffiti is a modern invention and blame tourists who don't appreciate the world treasure, the graffiti is actually from the time of Pompeii itself. There are over 11,000 pieces of graffiti in the city, and they reveal some of the concerns and activities of the nighttime hours. Some graffiti represent advertisements for businesses or gladiator games, a popular form of entertainment in Pompeii. Others are more personal and can even get downright bawdy. One of the tamer personal messages reads, Successus, Successus the, the weaver, weaver, loves Iris, Iris the, slave the slave of the innkeeper's wife. She, she doesn't, doesn't return his affections, affections but, but he, he tries, tries to make her pity him. So says his rhyme, farewell. The people wrote about their unrequited loves, their businesses, and other nightlife activities. 
all of which remind us that Pompeii was filled with ordinary people who experienced the same troubles and emotions that we do today. Number 5. Nero's Second Wife Came From Pompeii One of Pompeii's big claims to fame in ancient Rome was that it was the home of Papia Sabina, who became Nero's second wife. Papia was born around 30 CE to a wealthy family, and she began her married life at the age of 14. She was wed to Rufrius Crispinus, who was the leader of the Praetorian Guard, but they were only married for about 10 years. The two divorced and, eventually, Papia became Nero's wife. She certainly was talented at playing politics. Even though she was living in Rome at this point, records indicate that Papia continued to visit her hometown of Pompeii, making it even more well-known throughout the Roman Empire. This continued until 65 CE, when Papia died suddenly. Historians are unsure if she was killed by Nero or died from a miscarriage, but she did die before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, so she never had to watch the destruction of her beloved hometown. Number 6. Earthquakes Foretold Pompeii's Upcoming Doom In 62 CE, 17 years before Mount Vesuvius erupted, Pompeii was hit by a devastating earthquake that demolished half the city. Historians are unsure if the earthquake was directly linked to Mount Vesuvius's upcoming eruption, but they do estimate that it ranged from a 5 to a 6.1 on the Richter scale, although some historians think it could have been scaled as high as 7.5. Ancient Roman buildings were not built to survive such intense earthquakes, and half the city was destroyed. The poor were more affected because their dwelling places were not as sturdy as the villas the rich and middle class lived in. But the people of Pompeii weren't going to let a little natural disaster get in the way of their lives. Although many rich people left to live somewhere where the ground is always stable, the people who remained began to rebuild the city. There were several other earthquakes leading up to the eruption in 79 CE, but the people were too focused on repairing the city to worry about what dangers those earthquakes might have foretold. Number 7. No one knows what day Mount Vesuvius erupted You would think that something as world-altering as a major volcano erupting would be well documented, but the Romans' calendars can be difficult for modern-day scholars to follow. There are a few possible dates. One of the possible dates is August 24th, which Pliny the Younger documents in his letters 25 years later, and it would make sense. Every August 23rd, the people of Pompeii celebrated Vulcanalia, a festival dedicated to Vulcan, the god of fire and metalwork. By August 23rd, the volcano should have been showing signs of life, but the earthquakes and smoke would have been perceived as Vulcan's pleasure at the festival. It clearly meant he was hard at work in his forges under Mount Vesuvius, so any signs of danger would have been misinterpreted or ignored. Some historians dismiss August 24th as an accurate date, preferring dates in October and November. Much of the produce preserved in Pompeii appears to be late fall or winter produce, but the strongest argument is that archaeologists have found a piece of graffiti dated October 17th. They believe it comes from the year 79 CE, which means that Mount Vesuvius could not have erupted before October 18th. There is much speculation about the actual date of the eruption, and there is no firm anniversary date for this huge natural disaster. Number 8. The people of Pompeii did not die from lava exposure. Pompeii was not close enough to be affected by the lava that erupted from Mount Vesuvius. There are more far-reaching and dangerous aspects of a volcanic eruption, and Pompeii fell victim to those aspects. These include the ash, which historians believe fell at a rate of 4 to 6 inches an hour, and the pyroclastic surges. Pyroclastic surges are superheated winds of ash, rock, and volcanic gases. They are hot enough to instantly kill anything in their path, and Mount Vesuvius had six during its eruption. People were either buried alive in the ash or were instantly killed by the pyroclastic surges. Even though many of the bodies were found to be curled up, they were not curled up in agony. The bodies curled after death due to the intense heat. The people were dead within a fraction of a second. The surge that came through Pompeii was hot enough to form hardened shells around the bodies which allowed archaeologists to make the famous body casts of the people who did not escape from Pompeii. Number 9. Some people did not even try to escape Historians believe that the eruption did not begin until about noon, when most people were resting and taking their afternoon meal. 
The people did not understand that the cloud forming above the mountain was the beginning of their doom. The ash did not begin to fall until about 1 p.m. that afternoon, and although some people fled while they still could, others hid themselves in cellars to try to wait out this new disaster. During the excavations, archaeologists have found that at least 2,000 people tried to hide from the volcanic eruption in various cellars. When people realized that there was nowhere in the city to hide, it was too late to escape. By about 6.30 a.m. the next day, the city had been wiped out and the falling ash would preserve the shells left by the last people of Pompeii. Number 10. After the eruption, Pompeii was lost to history until 1592. Even though the loss of Pompeii was traumatic for the Roman Empire, Pompeii was lost and forgotten about as the centuries passed. Domenico Fontana first rediscovered Pompeii in 1592 when he found some paintings while digging an aqueduct. However, he didn't share his discoveries with the world so Pompeii might have been completely lost if architects had not discovered Herculaneum, a neighboring city that was also wiped out by the Mount Vesuvius eruption. They discovered Herculaneum while digging to lay a foundation for a royal palace, and they quickly began looking for other cities that had been buried. They didn't know the names of the cities they discovered, but in 1763, they finally found an inscription naming one of their found cities as Pompeii. Archaeologists have since warmed to the site and discovered a Roman city preserved from the 1st century CE. Although the end of the city was tragic, its preservation by the same natural disaster that wiped out its inhabitants has given us today a good look into the life during the Roman Empire and a reminder to stay away from smoking mountains. To learn more about Pompeii, check out our book, Pompeii, A Captivating Guide to the City in Ancient Rome that was buried because of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius during the rule of the Roman Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.